Hi, this is Guy Kawasaki. Hi, this is Gideon Shelwick here. My name is Farnoosh Brock. And you're listening to Learning with Leslie. Learning with Leslie. This is Learning with Leslie. 888-835-2414. This is Learning with Leslie. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Learning with Leslie, the podcast where you learn, I learn, we all learn about how to build an online business with a blog. No, I'm not talking about one of those blogs that will fall by the wayside when Google has a mood swing. (laughs) I'm talking about one that will thrive no matter what gets thrown at it. I'm your host, Leslie Samuel from becomeablogger.com, where we're changing the world one blog at a time. And as usual, I have another exciting episode for you today, but this one is even more exciting. I'm here in New uh, Las Vegas, Nevada at the New Media Expo with a bunch of excited people. Yeah! Oh yeah! This is actually my live session. We are going to be talking about how to podcast like a pro and never edit. I don't know about you, but I've been recording my podcast for a while and I got tired of all the editing. It took too much time, I have too much to do. So I had to find a way to do it more efficiently and that's what we're gonna be talking about today, how to podcast like a pro and never edit. That is what we're gonna be talking about today. All right, we are here for another episode of Learning with Leslie. It's a very special episode. This is episode 100, and this is my talk at New Media Expo. If you're listening to this uh, in the car or wherever it is you may be listening to this, this is my actual session at New Media Expo, and we have some excited people here today. We're going to be talking about how to podcast like a pro and never edit. So for those of you that are here live, I am so excited that you are here. Uh, We have a lot to talk about. And before we actually get into what we're going to talk about, I want to tell you a little bit about who I am and how I got into making the decision that if I'm going to be podcasting, I need to do it a different way because I just don't have the time. So let me um, tell you a little bit about myself. All right. So Let's get started with the, um, what we're going to be talking about. First, I'm going to talk about what, who I am and why I started podcasting. I'm going to go through my podcasting f- uh, workflow, what I used to do before, and what I am doing today. I'm going to be talking about how I go about planning my episode and how you can do the same thing if you're going to be doing it the way that I'm doing it. And then at the end, we're going to have some time for q and So let me tell you a little bit about my crazy story. My name is Leslie Samuel. I am from the island of St. Martin. I live in Berrien Springs, Michigan. Um, And a a few years ago, I was a a high school biology teacher, teaching science and math at a high school. Biology was the main thing that I was doing. Um, But I wanted to find a way to do things online that could supplement the income that I was making. All right, I had a steady job, so it wasn't as if, you know, I was struggling to pay the bills or anything of that sort, but I wanted to make a little more so I can pay the bills a little faster and do some more fun stuff that people like to do and that it takes money to do it. Um, So I started getting online and I started um, doing a number of different things. I made a bunch of errors and mistakes, a lot of failures. I lost some money buying programs of people that were going to show me how to make a million dollars in 52 seconds with one click of a button and all that fun stuff. Ooh, music next door. I like it. Um, So I started what I was doing online. Eventually, I kind of figured out this blogging thing, and I started my blog. My main blog that I work on is becomeablogger.com, and on becomeablogger.com, I talk about how you can become a blogger? How can, how can you build a platform that can, where you can create content to inspire others and even change the world, and while doing that, make some income? Um, but at a certain point along my journey, um, I was a high school teacher. I wanted to be a university professor, but while I was doing my master's, I was doing research, and I hated it with a passion. I was researching crickets, not just crickets. I was researching one neuron in a cricket and how it's processed. I'm not going to go into all this. (laughs) 
You don't even want to hear about it right now. But anyhow, um, needless to say, I hated spending 15 hours in a lab with a cricket chirping in my ear. So um, I gave up on my dream of wanting to be a university professor. I didn't want to do the PhD thing, so I just started teaching at a high school. It was going well, but at a certain point, I started to think to myself, man, I really want to teach this university level stuff. And that's when I started my second blog, which is the interactive biology blog. And on that blog, I decided I am going to teach exactly what I want to teach. If I want to teach university level biology, I'm going to teach university level biology. I don't care if I don't have a PhD. I don't care about all that stuff. I'm just going to do it. So I started to do it. I started making short videos, like five minutes, eight minutes. Was, I think that was the longest video. And, and, and putting them up on YouTube, embedding them in my blog, making sure I had the transcript and all that stuff for SEO and all the things that I had been learning from doing internet marketing online. Because I figure if I know about internet marketing and I look at all these other blogs out there teaching biology that you can see that they have no idea what they're doing and they're successful, I might as well do it. And hopefully, you know, as a result of me doing it and as a result of my experience, it will grow. It has grown, it has grown significantly in the last month, uh, 55,000 unique visitors. But I'm telling you all of this to say, as a result of what I was doing online, it opened up the way for me to become a university professor. No PhD, none of that kind of stuff. I, I got an invitation to apply for a position, like a lot of people got the invitation. A lot of people applied, PhDs, Doctor of Physical Therapies, because I teach in a Doctor of Physical Therapy program. And um, they weren't even going to consider me. So I went down to meet with the chair of the department. And when I went down to meet with the chair of the department, the, it started off like this. He was sitting. He had his arms folded. And he was kind of looking at me like, OK, so why are you here? Um, so I, I started to tell him I'm applying for the position as an anatomy professor. Um, and I just wanted to kind of come down and talk to you and let you know some of the things that I'm doing. OK, so he said, OK, tell me what you're doing. And I started to show him what I was doing online. And you could see his demeanor change from, from this to kind of like, hmm, interesting. And then he started looking in and clicking around and getting all excited. He told me that I will make sure that you at least get an interview. Got the interview next day, got offered the job. And as a result of what I was doing online, this is, I'm saying this to say, you'd be surprised to, at what? What you are doing online today, how that can impact your life in so many different ways. I'm not talking about making a ton of money, even though making a ton of money is a good thing, a very good thing. But that's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about opening up, no, really good, opening up <laughs> opportunities. You guys are getting distracted. Stop it. Opening up opportunities for all kinds of different things. But now, here's the problem. I'm a university professor teaching anatomy. I've never taken anatomy in my life. I'm teaching it to people in a doctoral program, so there's a high level of expectation. Um, I'm teaching neuroscience, and I, my master's was in neurobiology, but there was a lot that I didn't know about neuroscience. So as you can imagine, there was a lot of work that I needed to do. I need to study this morning and teach what I just studied this morning, this afternoon. Not fun. My time is extremely limited. So that's one aspect of my life, what I'm doing um, professionally as a university professor. But then there's this little one. I just had to show him. When you just had a child, you have to put him on a screen in your presentation because you know, it makes people say, oh, you know, all that nice stuff. But my wife and I just had a, a, our first child, a son, um, six weeks ago, basically, six weeks on Thursday, and we're, yeah, it's good stuff. That's my boy, <laughs> little Noah. This is the most important thing in my life right now. And if I am not spending time with my wife, if I am not spending time with my son, just, just kill me. I, 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 don't, I, I don't even want to live. So between this, preparing for a job and teaching, stuff that you've never learned before, running two online businesses, I don't have the time to podcast the way I used to podcast before. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense, right? So I, I thought my remote was working, but I, I keep having to come up here because it stopped working. Um, I knew that I wanted to podcast. And you know why I knew I wanted to podcast? Very simple reason. 
These people right here. There's a girl there that's in a gym. She's working out, but she has some earbuds in her ears. You know what she's doing? She's listening to Learning with Leslie, at least for the purpose of this, <laughs> this presentation. <laughs> he's laying in his bed. He's, he's listening to Learning with Leslie. She's driving in her car. She is listening to Learning with Leslie. And there's something significant about this, because they have these earbuds in their ears, and they are focused on the information that you are sharing with them. That's powerful stuff. That's a way to impact people in ways that you can never imagine. Sometimes I get emails from people, and to hear the stories, it's amazing. And I didn't want to stop doing that. All right, this is a great way for people to be learning with you. But if you don't have the time, what do you do? That's the question that we're going to be answering today, because there are things uh, that you can do. It comes down to time management. Um, there's something that you probably all have heard about that's called the 80-20 rule. What does the 80-20 rule say? You want, well, there are a number of things that it does say, but you want to make sure that you are focusing 80% of your time, this is my um, summary of what it means to me, 80% of your time on the 20% of the things that are going to be making the biggest difference in your online business, in your blog, in what you're doing online, in what you're doing in life in general, all right? Now, I know that editing my podcast is a great thing to do, you know, if I have the time and all that kind of stuff, but really and truly, cutting and pasting and adding in music and adjusting the levels and spending three hours of post-production, I don't have it. Those, those, th those tasks, aren't really going to contribute to the girl that was um, running in the, in the gym on a treadmill that was listening to my podcast. That doesn't matter to her. It doesn't matter to the guy that was laying in his bed listening to learning with you, learning with me and all that kind of stuff, or the lady that's driving in her car or anything of that sort. So that is not where I want to spend my time. I want to spend my time on content. I want to make sure that my content is as good as it can be. I want to make sure that when I am podcasting, I'm doing it professionally, but the people are getting the message that I'm trying to portray. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, sweet. So I've made a case for um, why, we, why I like to do it this way. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what my initial setup was like. And this is a very common setup. It's a relatively good setup. Um, I had a USB microphone in this example. I'm using the Rode Procaster. Um, and that USB microphone was plugged directly into my computer. And it's very simple, very easy. You can record professional quality audio. Um, and then I use Audacity to edit. Audacity is a free program, very simple. A lot of people know about it. Um, and a lot of people use it for recording and editing their podcast. But it took a lot of time adding in the music cutting out the ums and the ahs and the mistakes and all that kind of stuff. It takes a little more time than I am willing to invest. And as you know, time is money. So we need a more efficient way of doing this, and that's exactly what I um, went to. Now, in my current setup, the most important aspect of that current setup is my mixer. Why? because the mixer allows me to bring in audio from multiple sources. Okay, I can have my music coming in like you heard this morning. I can have all kinds of sound effects if you want that in your podcast. I can do an interview on Skype and I can bring that into a separate channel and then I can adjust the levels. Okay, we have some volume sliders on the bottom, those little white um, buttons, not buttons, but sliders that you can move up and down to adjust the, uh, the, the level of the sound that's coming in to the mixer so that when it goes out into whatever you are using for recording, it is going out at the exact level that you want it to go out. So this is the central component of everything I do today, and it's a, a big reason as to why I am able to edit, I mean, podcast professionally without having to edit. So I want to show you a little bit, of, uh, well, no, I'm going to show you in detail um, my entire workflow. So this is the mixer. This is what everything is centered around. This is what everything is coming into so that I can control it as I am uh, recording it. The first thing you're going to need 
is a microphone. The microphone that I use is called, I, I like Rode, um, so I use the Rode Procaster. That's the microphone that goes for $229 on Amazon. Um, it's a relatively good one. I mean, I mean, it's a really good one. I know a lot of people use the HAL PR40, and you can get that on Amazon. Uh, it's not on Amazon, but you can get that online for um, $295, I think. Um, and um, that microphone, the key things about that microphone is it's a dynamic microphone. That has to do with the quality. Now, a lot of people use condenser microphones, and condenser microphones are great for their purpose. They're very sensitive. They pick up the full quality of your voice, but they also pick up the full quality of everything else. I don't like that. I want my podcast, when I am talking, I want it to be my voice and that alone. Uh, so with a dynamic microphone, it's not as sensitive um, but I am right up on that mic dynamic microphone, and it is getting my voice directly. Now, there's another microphone that I just heard about, the Audio-Technica. Well, I, I have it later on, but it's a USB and an XLR microphone, um, which is kind of cool. You know, if you're just starting out and you want an inexpensive microphone, it's $49 on Amazon, or $43 on Amazon, um, and you can use it as a USB microphone in the setup that I had initially. Very inexpensive, and you can get started for 40 something dollars. And then when you upgrade to something like this, it has an XLR cable, and an XLR cable, or the, the, that green cable that I'm showing there, um, that's going into the top of the mixer. That's an XLR cable, and that allows you to run it into a mixer. Okay, so that's the first part, the microphone. Make sure you have a good sounding microphone because you want to podcast like a pro. You don't just not want to edit, but you want to make sure you are uh, podcasting professionally. Then I have my laptop um, that is also uh, plugged into another channel. Um, I'm using a, a specific program that I'm going to talk about in a little while called Soundbite because what that allows me to do is it allows me to put all of my sound clips in that program and then just click on it when I want it to play. And I can set the levels of the different sounds to make sure it is at the level that I want it to be. So that's part two. Now, some of you will probably be, or you're probably podcasting and doing interviews. And if you're interviewing, what program are you most likely using? Skype, Skype right? Um, now, the way I do this is I actually have a separate computer. It's not a MacBook Pro because two MacBook Pros cost a lot of money. <laughs> So I just bought a cheap $200 computer that a PC, please forgive me, I know I'm using a PC, I, I try not to um, you know, play with the devil, but I am, using, I am using a PC for that, it's very simple, all I need, um, actually, wait, this is mixed up, the, what I, I use a PC for playing back sound, sorry, and I use my Mac for doing the interviews, whichever one you use, it's fine, as long as it works. Um, so that's the next thing. I have those on two different channels because if the person is louder than me, which is not usually the case, um, or if the person is so softer than me, I can adjust them separately, um, which is also a good thing to do. Then, in the past, as I showed, I used to record directly into my laptop via USB. I have had situations where I am recording an episode and it is an awesome episode. I am feeling it, I'm on fire and I could imagine the girl in the car listening to it and being like, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> and then you go to save it and then you see that spinning ball thing that you never like to see and then the program disappears off your screen and then you start to cry and all that fun stuff. I don't like when that happens. All right, so I actually now record into a digital recorder. The one that I'm showing there is the Roland, I mean, the, yeah, the Roland R-05. Um, I am actually using the previous model, which is the Edderall R-09HR, no longer in production, but it does the exact same thing. That's the little device that I have up there with the red thing on saying that it is recording. I've never lost an episode doing it that way. It's much safer. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the prices. I think that goes for $200 on Amazon. Um, there are cheaper alternatives. 
um, and that's fine. You can get a, a, a good quality um, digital recorder for as little as 80 something or 90 something dollars and do a pretty good job with it. So this, oh, one more aspect, one more very important aspect, and that is my headphones, okay? In my opinion, it doesn't matter which headphones you use as much because that doesn't determine the quality of your recording. It just determines what you hear. What you hear is important because you want to make sure it is exactly how you want it to be. This is what you're doing for quality control. And if you're, of course, if you're doing an interview, you need to hear that person. So you want that to be going into your, air, your you want that to be going through your headphones. Um, and I use some Audio Technica headphones. It doesn't matter the model or anything. The main thing is you want it to be comfortable. If you're comfortable with it, that's all that matters. You can get good sound from that, and that is exactly what you want to do. All right, so that is my entire workflow. Uh, in terms of the cables, the green one that you see going from the microphone to the mixer, that is an XLR cable. Uh, the, the purplish pinky one and the yellowish orangey one that are going to the computers, those would be, um, let's see, that's quarter, double, double quarter inch to one eighth inch um, cables that are going to the laptops. And then, of course, the headphone comes with its own um, cable. And going into the recorder, I have an RCA to eighth inch, double RCA to eighth inch. If that doesn't make any sense, so you want some more details about that, you can speak to me about it afterwards. Um, and I'm also going to be including it with the episode that I'm recording when I do post this on my blog. All right, so that is my workflow. Let's talk about the equipment options. Uh, we're just going to go through them really quickly. For the microphone, there are a number of options. This is the one that I was telling you about, the Audio Technica ATR2100 USB. That is a very long name. I don't know who decided this is what I'm going to call the microphone. But anyhow, that is the, 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 the Audio Technica USB and XLR microphone available on Amazon for $44. The one that I use is the Rode Procaster. It costs $229 on Amazon, and then of course, if you want to go a little higher end, you can get the Heil PR40, which is $295 on Amazon. Uh, in terms of the mixer, the, I use the Mackie VLZ3 mixer. Um, the, this one that you're looking at here is the 1402 um, VLZ3. That's because it has 14 channels, so 1402, that's what it means. Here I have the, the Mackie 402 VLZ3, and there's a 402, there's a 802, there's a 1202, depending on how many channels you want to have in your setup. I went with the 14 channel one because I plan on expanding a little bit. I'd like to have multiple people in the studio um, so that we can do all kinds of different things. So I went with the more expensive option, which is uh, 399. If you go with the 402, which is what I have here, that is available for um, $99. Uh, there's also the um, Behringer mixers that are a little cheaper. You, I think you can get one for as little as $49. Um, so that makes it a little more affordable. And then for the digital recorder, we have the, the Roland R-05. That's available right now on Amazon for 202 So what I knew that if I wanted to do this professionally and not edit, I needed to invest in the right equipment. That's really what it boils down to. I can edit it myself, or I can pay someone to edit it, or I can do it the easy way, spend some money up front, and then I have everything that I need to make sure that my podcast is recorded professionally, and it's saving me a lot of time. So I didn't say this in the beginning, but if I'm recording a 30-minute episode, it takes me 35 minutes from um, hitting record to having it being uploaded upline. Upline? Online. There we go. Record like a pro, not speak like a pro, right? All right. Okay, so those are some equipment options. Audio playback. This is the program that I use for playing back my audio. Uh, you can take all of your MP3 files or WAV files and sound effects and all that kind of jazz, your intro music and whatever you do, and you can put it in each one of those individual um, rectangular sections. All right, and then when you want one to be played back, you can just go ahead and click on it. You can also see that there are these little sliders here. 
um, that you use to adjust the volume. So it's kind of like a mixer right there on the program so you can adjust the volume of the individual track so that it does not um, uh, get too loud or too soft and all of that stuff. One thing to mention about the digital recorders before going into recording interviews, um, with the digital recorders, the, what I do is I make sure to set my levels. And then when I look at my level meter, the VU meter is what you, you see it here if you were close up and it's moving as I'm talking, as audio is going, it's showing me those levels. I try to make sure that when I'm talking at the level that I'm going to be talking, it's somewhere between negative 12 and negative 6 dB. Okay, so if you're using a digital recorder, that gives you a good range because if you get a little louder because you get excited about something or you have people in a room screaming or something of that sort, there's some room above, there's some headroom so that it doesn't clip. You don't want it to clip because it just doesn't sound good. All right? Recording interviews, I use Skype for recording my interviews. Um, as we spoke about before. And then if you are doing video in addition to your audio, you can use a program like Ecamm Call Recorder on the Mac, which is what I use. Um, if you're on a PC, there's Pamela and a few others. Uh, I, I was in a session yesterday with Jamie Tardy and she spoke about some other options. I don't remember what they, what's that? VOD Burner. That is another one that from what I hear, it's actually better than Pamela. Um, so that is one that you can use for recording your video. I do not use the audio from these programs. I actually just have my digital recorder because I know that that's going to give me the best quality audio. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so that is recording interviews. Ecamm call recorder is the one there. Now, just while I was here at New Media Expo, there's a guy in the, the exhibit area demoing this program. Let's say you don't want to spend 40, even $44 on a microphone. This guy right here, this does everything that all the other stuff that I was showing you, do, it does. And uh, this is $9.99 in the, the, the iOS store. <laughs> $9.99. $9.99. So I went and I tested it out. I connected a microphone to my, um, uh, my, my iPhone, literally. And you see you have these little um, sections that you can put audio clips in, your intro music, your outro music, your sound effects, and you just press it. It says your number and your music, and then you say, this is learning with whoever you are. <laughs> and you can set the levels. Look, this is your mixer an easier mixer than that and the big nine, $399 mixer that I'm using. And it works very well. I was very impressed. From there, you can export it, upload it, everything, and you're done. $9.99. It's crazy. This technology stuff, man. It's, mm. it's on sale. Five bucks? What? Man, I don't need this. <laughs> I spent all this money and... <laughs> oh, okay, so now that we're over that, uh, uh, what was I going to say now? Oh, yes, arrows and roads. Okay, so <laughs> you're not taking a lot of time to edit your interviews. You're not editing them at all if you're following the, the workflow that I, I, I talk about. But you want to make sure your content is awesome. And in order to make sure that your content is awesome, I plan out my episodes. I plan out my podcast episodes. Um, my interviews, I have research done on the interviews, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a little while. Um, but I want to make sure that I have a clear roadmap as to where I'm trying to get so that when I start, I'm not just going all over the place. I am going on that straight road to my destination. I want to guide my listeners through the process that I, the journey that I want them to go on in each and every episode. So in that, there are three parts to my um, episodes. 
those three parts. Of course, you have the introduction. That's where I play the theme music. I, I introduce the episode and all that kind of stuff. Then I go into the meat of the episode, where I'm teaching whatever I'm teaching, or I'm, if it might not be teaching for you, it might be entertaining, or whatever the case might be. Um, and then there's the closing, of course, where I, I, I do whatever I do for my closing. And you'll see what I do for my closing in a little while. Um, so let's talk about those uh, those introduction, well, those different sections. First, you have the introduction. Now, have you ever met someone and it was kind of like this awkward, hey, I am Leslie, how are you doing? <laughs> bad first impression, bad first impression. Does that stick with you? Now, if you turn on a podcast episode, yes, okay, you testifying, all right. Okay, so um, you turn on a podcast episode for the first time and you listen to this podcast episode and the introduction does not captivate you. It doesn't capture you. Are you going to continue? No, you want that introduction to be exciting. I actually write out my, episode, my introductions. I write it out and then I read it exactly the way it is because I want to make sure that I am conveying the right type of message. Now, this is something that took practice. In the beginning, and I'll show you, I'll, I'm going to give you some examples. It's going to be kind of scary. Um, but in the beginning, it wasn't very exciting. Um, now, my, my introductions, I think they're pretty exciting. And people seem to think that they are pretty exciting too. So hopefully that's a good thing. I want to, I want to play you some responses when I'm interviewing people. Oh, no. It's not going to let me do that. Oh, no, it is. Okay, so this is one I interviewed um, Kim and Rob Murgatroyd Mur from Jet Set Life. And uh, I did my introduction, and this was their response. Let's turn you up, and... We're great. Thank you for having us. Oh, I, just want to sit here. I just want to sit here and watch the show. I don't even feel like I'm a part of it. I just, like, you, are, you are a show in the box. Oh, man, this, this is, is, this is this so much jingles, fun. There's dancing. I mean, so many of these interviews we do are just blah, blah, blah. <laughs> What's this? What's that? You're dancing. I well, mean, we, we, we got to spice it up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, actually, I'm going to go get some Patron. We're going to do some shots. This is a, <laughs> this is a party. <laughs> All right. I interviewed Guy Kawasaki, and then I, uh, I did my intro to Guy Kawasaki, and this was his response. I must admit, that's the best intro music I have ever listened to. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you that you're the first person to say that, but I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's, let's introduce me again so I can listen again. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed. I'm glad you enjoyed. Hey, thank you so much for joining me today on this interview, man. Sure, sure. I mean, hell, if I knew that the intro music was so good, I would have done this again. Yeah. So. <laughs> we could have had a video of you dancing while I did yeah, it. That would yeah, make it even yeah. more interesting, huh? <laughs> <laughs> when he heard my intro, he was ec excited. You know, because it's not just the normal, you know, normally you just record a, the intro and all that kind of stuff and then you add the music. But when you have the music coming in live, that's something that kind of sets you a little bit apart. And you can see from their responses that they were very energized by how the intro, how the intro went and that gave them even more enthusiasm for the rest of the interview. All right, then there is the meat of the episode. This is the important stuff. This is the stuff, I don't write this all out because I don't want to sound like I'm reading. You know, when I'm doing the music and, and then I'm talking with my introduction and all that kind of stuff, the music is already hyped. So even if I sound a little bit as, I'm re as if I'm reading, it, there's other stuff going on that keeps it going. Okay, but for this, I just do an outline. I say, these are the topics that I want to cover. This is the sequence that I want to go in. This is the journey that I want to take you on. Okay, so that is the meat of the episode. And then there's the closing, going to the finish line. Very important thing to think about when you are doing this. Number one, you want to wrap up what you've been doing. Okay, but number two, you want to give some kind of a call to action. This is something that I've been hesitant to do in the past, but really you want to let people know what the next step is. That next, next step for you might just be getting them to come back to your website, your blog, to get more interviews just like this. So if you have a training course, you want to talk a little bit about that. You don't, and I'm not talking about hard selling. 
I'm talking about letting people know the value that you have to offer because if they just listen to this entire episode, this entire interview, they are pretty engaged. And while they're in that engaged state, you want to take them, you want to tell them exactly where to go next. So you want to make sure to keep that in mind. Now, practice makes perfect. When I first started doing my podcast episodes, they did not sound the way that they sound today. And rather than telling you what they sounded like, I am going to let you hear a before and after. Now, I did, an inter I did two interviews with Pat Flynn. We did one when I was, he was my first interview on the show. And then, a few weeks ago, I interviewed him again. Before and after. Here we go. Interview number one. Same person. Welcome to another episode of Learning with Leslie. Uh, this is Leslie the Freebie Guy from thefreebieguy.net. And I am excited for this show today. And I'm excited for this show because I'm doing an interview. This is my first interview on the show. And I'm interviewing none other than Pat Flynn. Um, I got to know Pat uh, maybe a few months ago when I uh, listened to an interview that he was doing. And I really liked what he was doing to the point that it has inspired a lot of what I'm doing. So I'm glad to have him on the show. Pat, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. And I look forward to this chat that we're about to have. I was excited. <laughs> I was very excited. We're great. Thank you for Oops. Hi, this is Guy Kawasaki. Hi, this is Gideon Chalwick here. here. My name is Farnish Brock. And you're listening to Learning with Leslie. Difference. Learning with Leslie. This is Learning with Leslie. 888-835-2414. This is Learning with Leslie. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Learning with Leslie, the podcast where you learn, I learn, we all learn about how to build an online business with a blog. No, I'm not talking about one of those blogs that will fall by the wayside when Google has a mood swing. <laughs> I'm talking about one that will thrive no matter what gets thrown at it. I'm your host, Leslie Samuel from becomeablogger.com, and I have another exciting interview for you today. It's actually been a while since I've done an interview. So I had to come with something awesome for you. I'm on the line with my buddy Pat Flynn from SmartPassiveIncome.com who got his start online with a blog that he started to help himself and co-workers pass an exam related to architecture over at GreenExamAcademy.com. He went on to build that blog into a very successful online I'm business. Since then, he started so SmartPassiveIncome.com where he shares his experiences that he's had building his online businesses. And he's built it into a passionate online community. Pat stands out as someone who I consider to be a very ethical blogger. So in this conversation, we're going to talk about how to be an ethical blogger slash marketer and still make money. That's what we're going to talk about today. Pat, thank you so much for joining me, man. How you doing? Dude, I'm doing awesome. And after the intro music, I'm just so happy right now. It's just <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was great. I love the intro. What are the differences you noticed? Did you notice a difference in the quality of the sound? Not, not, not a significant difference, but you notice a difference in my enthusiasm, in my energy. It took a while. It took episodes for me to get into my voice. Also, did you notice what in the world did I say in the first one? How did I introduce him? I didn't say anything about really who he was and why we're getting into what we're doing. That was unscripted. The second time was scripted. I wrote down everything that I was going to say, but it sounded much better. I want to let you know that you're, if you're starting a podcast, or if you've been, you know, you've been podcasting for a little while, the more you do it, the better you get, and the more you kind of grow into yourself and learn to accept who you are and podcast naturally. All right, so practice definitely makes perfect and I think we're coming down to the end yes we are coming down to the end so I need to play my 
outro music and then pull out. I forgot it was the end. Gee. Okay, so. <laughs> no, one more thing. Mistakes, like I just did. This was like, a, what I did just now was just to show you what to do when you make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna go with that. All right, uh, mistake number one. I introduced someone um, in my podcast and this is how it went. I'm your host, Leslie Samuel, the authority blogger from learningwithleslie.com and I have another exciting episode for you today, an exciting interview. I'm on the line with Kimberly Go Got oh man, <laughs> Gauthier. She's gonna correct me afterwards. I just messed it up. A fur mom blogger who started. All right, so I just completely botched her name, right? And then it's time for me to welcome her on the Kimberly, show. Kimberly, thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Leslie? Well, I was doing great until I just botched your name. <laughs> we even practiced it beforehand, and I had it. <laughs> You even told me that it was good, but then all of a sudden, I don't know what, you know what happened actually? This is the truth. I'm interviewing you right now on Skype, and while I was doing the introduction, my mom started Skyping me, <laughs> so I got, I got distracted. But that's not the point. How are you doing? Everything good? I am doing fantastic. Okay, good. So now for those people that don't know how to say your, your name correctly, can you say it for us? Yes, it's Gautier. Gautier. You were very close. I was very close, but then, the, anyhow, it doesn't matter what happened. <laughs> so, so, all right, you made a mistake. What do you do? Do you edit it out your podcast? Well, you can choose to do that. I choose not to. Why? It makes me seem like, you know, one of those regular people that, like, makes mistakes. And that's not a bad thing. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Just go out there and record your episode. For those of you that are listening to the podcast, of course, as usual, if you have any questions, you know what to do. You can call the hotline, and that number is... 888-835-2414. All right, so let's cue the outro music, and... That's pretty much it for this episode. I hope you got a ton of value uh, from it. Of course, this, is, uh, this podcast is brought to you by becomeablogger.com. If you are looking to get your blog started, you're trying to get this whole WordPress thing figured out, you're not exactly sure what WordPress even is and all that stuff, you can come back to the blog, becomeablogger.com, or sign up for our 10 free videos at freebloggingvideos.com. Um, so this is Leslie Samuel. I'm here in New Media at New Media Expo in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I hope you got a ton of value. And I will see you next week for another episode. Until next time, take care and God bless. They can see me now because it's being recorded. This is my outro. I'm not supposed to be talking. I'm going to shut up now.